Hello, welcome to Jesus the Rock Church. My name's Reverend Dan. I welcome you to this Bible study today. It's a beautiful day out, a little overcast, but it's probably about 73 degrees. It is beautiful out of Brimfield, Mass. I praise you and thank you for this Bible study, dear Lord Jesus. Help us, Lord God, get the most that you want out of it. Bless this time that we spend together, Lord God, as we go through your word. In Jesus' name I pray. So we left off in chapter 22, so we're going to pick up in chapter 23 this morning. <clears throat> chapter 23, verse 1. Let's dig right in. And Paul, earnestly beholding the council, said, Men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience before God until this day. Verse 2. And the high priest Ananias commanded them that stood by him to smite him on the mouth. So, to punch him. Verse 3, Then said Paul unto him, God shall smite thee, thou whited wall, for sittest thou to judge me after the law, and commandest me to smite him contrary to the law. Verse 4, And they that stood by said, Revilest thou God's high priest? In verse 5, Then said Paul, I wist not, brethren, that he was the high priest, for it is written, Thou shalt not speak evil of the ruler of thy people. Good morning. See, when Paul says, I wist not, he's saying, I did not know that he was the high priest. Good morning. Right. Enjoy your walk. Thank you. You're welcome. Verse 6, But when Paul perceived that one part were Sadducees and the other Pharisees, he cried out in the council, Men and brethren, I am a Pharisee and the son of a Pharisee. Of the hope and the resurrection of the dead, I am called into question. And when he had said so, there arose a dissension between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the multitude was divided. Verse 8, For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, neither angel, nor spirit, but the Pharisees confess both. Verse 9, And there arose a great cry, and the scribes that were of the Pharisees part arose and strove, saying, We find no evil in this man. But if a spirit or an angel has spoken to him, let us not fight against God. So, they're recognizing that this man is of God, he's heard of God, let's not fight against God. Not against a man. Verse 10, And there arose a great dissension, and the chief captain, fearing least Paul should have been pulled in pieces of them, which means ripped apart, commanded the soldiers to go down and take him by force from among them and bring him into the castle. Okay, a place of safety away from the crowd. And the night following, the Lord stood by him and said, Be of good cheer, Paul, for as thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem, so must thou bear witness also at Rome. Now, you see, this is a beautiful thing. How many of you out there, the Lord stood by him. The Lord stands by us every day. But in this time of need, okay, it's the whole city that's after Paul that wants to kill him. The Lord stood by him. This is why studying scripture is imperative to your daily Christian walk. The Lord stood by him and said to him, Be of good cheer. Don't let the world drag you down. You have testified in Jerusalem. Now I'm going to have to send you to Rome. So you can do the same thing. In verse 12, When it was day... Certain of the Jews banded together and bound themselves, okay, bound themselves, tied themselves under a curse, saying that they would neither eat nor drink till they had killed Paul. Why would you bound yourself under a curse? We're not going to eat or drink, so we're going to go into starvation mode until we kill Paul. Why would you bind yourself under a curse? Okay, we read the scripture, we read the Bibles to imply to apply that to 
to our daily walk, to our daily living, why would you bind yourself under a curse? Is angry at someone that important? That I bind under a curse? It's just that would kill Paul. Verse 13. And they were more than 40 which had made this conspiracy. So this is just not a couple of people. More than 40. These are a lot of individuals that are angry. Okay. Verse 14. And they came to the chief priests and the elders and said, We have bound ourselves under a great curse, and we will eat nothing till we have slain Paul. So now they, the 40 of them, more than 40, bound themselves under this great curse, and now gone to the leadership, or gone to the people in authority, or gone to the people in power, and explained their curse that we want to kill this guy. Help us succeed in our thing, because we are not going to eat and drink until he's dead. Why would they do that? Because they didn't like what Paul was teaching and preaching. So, verse 15, Now therefore, ye that with counsel signify to the chief captain that he bring him down unto you tomorrow, as though ye would inquire something more perfectly concerning him, and we, over, he come near, are ready to kill him. Now, these are Jews. Whatever happened to thou shalt not kill? You just vanished from their brain? Verse 16, And when Paul's sister's son heard of their lying in wait, he went and entered into the castle and told Paul, Okay, so God's grace, his family member, his relative, his nephew, heard this plot, this scheme, this curse, that they're going to kill good old Uncle Paul. He ran and told. Verse 17, And Paul called one of the centurions unto him and said, Bring this young man unto the chief captain, for he has a certain thing to tell him. So he took him and brought him to the chief captain and said, Paul the prisoner called me unto him and prayed me to bring this young man unto you, thee, who has something to say unto thee, has something to tell you. Verse 19. And then the chief captain took him by the hand and went with him aside privately and asked him, What is it thou hast to tell me? Okay. Praise God. This young man has got something the truth to tell him. He pulls him aside. Nobody else can hear. What do you have to say? We can apply this to our daily lives. Uh, you that are in leadership, you that are in uh, a business or, or place of business, you're the CEO, FCEO, and someone is trying to tell you something in confidence trying to tell you the truth don't make them say it in front of everyone pull them aside and let them tell you one on one what's on their heart you're going to know it's the truth or the lie anyways you're walking with the Holy Spirit you have discernment let this young person come to you and approach you okay so you should pull them aside and said privately Ask him, what is it thou hast to tell me? Verse 20. And he said, The Jews have agreed to, to desire thee that thou wouldst bring down Paul tomorrow into the council as though they would inquire somewhat of him more perfectly. So what they're going to fake is inquiring to explain the scriptures more, explain more of you know, this word of God that you have to share with us. Okay? Now with here, he said, the Jews, in verse 20. Okay, in verse 27, it says the Jews. I'll get there in a little bit. But I don't want you to forget verse 20 where we are when I'm at verse 27. The Jews, having agreed. Okay, verse 21. But do not thou yield unto them, for there lie in wait for him of them more than forty men, which have bound themselves with an oath, 
that they will neither eat nor drink till they have killed him. And now are they ready, looking for a promise from thee. Okay? You're the boss. They're going to come to you. They're going to make you promise to bring Paul so they can explain it more perfectly. But they're actually lying in wait to murder this person. Or murder my uncle. Verse 22. So the chief captain then let the young man depart. See you later. And charged him made him promise, See thou tell no man that thou hast showed these things unto me. So keep it a secret. And he called unto him two centurions, Make ready two hundred soldiers to go to Caesarea, and horsemen threescore and ten, and spearsmen two hundred, at the third hour of the night. Okay? So he has a whole garrison of people that are going in the middle of the night. The chief captain is not fooling around with this. Verse 24, And provide them beasts that they may set Paul on, and bring him safe unto Felix the governor. And verse 25, And he wrote a letter after this manner. Okay? Now verse 25, a letter this is a lying letter. This is a letter of lies. But he's still protecting Paul. I'll explain here as we go on. Claudius, Lysias, unto the most excellent governor Felix, sendeth greetings. Okay, this is the, the content of the letter. Verse 27. This man was taken of the Jews. Remember I just was talking about that? And should have been killed of them. Okay. Now, when in verse 27 and verse 20, when it says the Jews, it's not referring to Jewish people, but unto ungodly leadership. You can also reference that in John 1, verse 19. The Jews, not the Jewish people. Okay, these are uh, ungodly leadership. Okay, then, let's go back to verse 27. Then came I with an army and rescued him, having understood that he was a Roman. And when I would have known the cause, therefore, they accused him. I brought him forth into their council, whom I perceived to be accused of question of their law, but to have nothing laid to his charge, worthy of death or bonds. I'm going to pause here now. Remember I said this is a lying letter. Okay. I rescued him. He was a Roman. Well, let's go back a little bit to Acts chapter 21, verse 33. Okay. Go back a little bit, a couple pages. Chapter 21, verse 33. Well, it says... And as they went about to kill him, tidings came unto the chief captain of the band that all Jerusalem was in an uproar. Okay? That was 31. 32. Who immediately took soldiers and Sertorians and ran down unto them. And when they saw the chief captain and soldiers, they left beating Paul. This is the crowd. Now this is where we want to get to. Verse 33. Then the chief captain came near and took him and commanded him to be bound with two chains. He didn't know he was a Roman. He immediately bound him with chains. But in the letter, right, they would, would not uh, death or bond. He, well, 33 says he bound him. Okay? Now, nothing. Now, verse 29 and verse, uh, Acts 23, nothing laid to his charge worthy of death or of bond. Let's go to back, chapter 22, verses 24 and 25. The chief captain commanded him to be brought unto the castle and bade that he should be examined by scourging. He's going to be flogged. He's going to be beaten. Okay, he's going to be scourged. Verse 25. And as they bound him with thongs, Paul said unto the centurion that stood by, 
Is it lawful for you to scourge a man that is a Roman and uncondemned? That is the truth of how the captain learned that he was a Roman. But he didn't say that in his letter. He's making himself, puffing himself up. Okay. Let's continue. Verse 30 in chapter 23. And when it was told me how that the Jews laid wait for the man, I sent straight away to thee and gave commandment to his accusers also to say before thee what they had against him. Farewell. Okay. So, the chief captain covered his tracks not to get punished that he bound an uncondemned Roman. He gave orders to have him flogged. <laughs> okay. So, he, he's covering his tail, so to speak. So, hallelujah, this is the letter that was sent. It still protected Paul. Verse 31, Then the soldiers, as it was commanded them, took Paul and brought him by night to Antipatus. And on the morrow they left the horsemen to go with them and returned to the castle. Verse 33, Who, when they came to Caesarea and delivered the epistle to the governor, presented Paul also before him. And verse 34, And when they had, uh, when the governor had read this letter, he asked of what providence he was. And when he understood that he was of Sh- uh, Silcia, Sil- yeah, Silcia, I will hear thee, said he, when thine accusers are also come. And he commanded him to be kept in Her- Herod's judgment hall. Herod's uh, judgment hall had to have been absolutely beautiful, had to have the amenities, because Herod, okay, yeah, okay, so they learned what was actually happening, so they put him in a really nice spot to wait for his accusers now to show up. So the chief captain got him out of the city, got him out of Dodge to protect Paul's life, but basically washed his hands of the problem and put the ball in the other person's court, Herod, that let them decide what's going to happen to this man because I'm not going to beat or punish a Roman. Let Herod deal with it. So we're going to leave off today. We thank you for sharing the Word of God. I praise you that you took the time and watched this video. If you have any comments or anything, just uh, leave a little comment below. Hit like and share. Share the Gospel. You know, like if you're full, share with the hungry. Hallelujah. Thank you, and God bless. Remember, Jesus is Lord. Why? Because He is. Because He loves you, and He's for you, and He's not against you. So bless. Be blessed. Peace be with you. Until next time, God bless. Bye-bye.